And this game is brought to you in HD TV by LG. Life's good. Michael Stewart, Scott Thornley, Douglas Sermons. The officials, Jim Nance and Clark Kellogg, ready to call it here at the South Regional Final. Two teams that on paper look evenly matched, Jim. Both have size, both have explosive scores on the perimeter. I think it very well could come down to which team is ready to grind it out for 40 minutes. It's more about will than skill when you get to this point. The tip ends up in the hands of Dunn. Baylor with its winningest season ever this year, 28 wins. I thought we might see this, Jim. Kyle Singler starting on lace Darius Dunn. Mike Krzyzewski wanting to put some size on the explosive scoring Dunn. Dunn had 23 in the win over St. Mary's on Friday. It's Carter faking the shot, now driving past Thomas, and that pass picked off by Zubek. To the corner. Singler feeds it back low. And that's Lomers taking it away from Thomas. He just swallowed that one up. I don't think Thomas realized it was the seven footer that was in his path. And a timeout called by Baylor as Carter was pinned. It's 50 seconds into the game and a timeout by the Bears. Baylor coach Scott Drew trying to take Bears basketball where it's never been in the modern era. They were in the final four in 48 and 50 and Coach K is 10 and 1 in this spot in regional finals. Only loss was to Kentucky in the final in 98 the regional final in St. Petersburg. Ball inbounded back to Tweedy Carter who turned it over the last trip. He committed a turnover on the first. As you see that is done hitting the three. Carter who had played flawlessly since the first possession of the tournament. Had one turnover to start this game, but now he sets up Lace Darius Dunn, and the Bears hit the shot. That kid can fill it up. He sure can, and then nice job there by Lance Thomas getting behind the zone defense. And one of the ways you can attack the zone, Jim, is by passing diagonally. You want to throw the ball into the middle of the floor, but the diagonal pass is also available too, especially if there's not good ball pressure on the passer. Foul on Singler. Again, you noted that matchup. Singler on Dunn. Well, again, I think the size of Singler, he may give up a little bit in quickness, but his size is something that Coach K is hoping will bother Lace Darius Dunn. The thing about Dunn, though, Jim, is he makes tough shots over taller defenders. He's got such a quick release and so much confidence in his offensive ability. That's Carter now. Singler on him, a switch off. That's Smith on Dunn. Dunn wanting it. Fade away shot. Tough one. Tipped around. Lomers and Zubak. Battle for it. Zubak swings it out. Almost taken away by Anthony Jones, but the Devils keep it. That's an interesting matchup as well. Lomers and Zubak, very similar player. They clog up the lane. They score on putbacks, and they're both very strong physically. Singler had a screen from Thomas, and that's a call against Lomers of Baylor. He didn't really need that. His team had possession, and he apparently threw somebody out of the lane, did Josh Lomers. But he's a very physical presence. I thought his work on Omar Samhan the other night was very instrumental in Omar struggling, particularly in that first half. Lomers played a very physical game mm -hmm. against him. That's exactly right. He bodied up on him, didn't allow him to get comfortable. Thomas short on the jumper, and it's done coming out with it. Wasted no time to fire up another shot. And off the floor, it's Zubek picking it up for the Blue Devils. Shire trying to set up for a shot. Oh, nice job by F.A. Udo to control the ball there. He picked up Nolan Smith and Cut him off, and now they're able to settle into the zone defense. Back out, Nolan Smith. Three-point shot, yes. Nicely done. Well, anytime you can attack with the pass or dribble to the middle of the lane against the zone, it really compresses that defense and gives you some passing lanes to find open shooters. Udo pulls up long with the shot. 
Ball tapped out to Shire. Smith has done. Zubak. Last touch by Duke. Well, Lomers came over to block that shot by Smith, and that freed up Zubek on the weak side board. He wasn't able to reel it in, but any of that kind of penetration by Duke early before the zone is set up should lead to positive results for the Blue Devils. Lomers with one foul. He sits. Quincy AC comes onto the floor. He gives them nine points and five rebounds off the bench. Explosive player. He sure is, Jim. He's been excellent in the tournament as well. Or just sets a screen on Thomas to try to act out a foul. You know, on the baseline and the dunk, and one. Too much quickness that time for Zubek. He turned and faced, jab, step, bang! That's what we call a right now move, Jim. Jab, step, and right to the bucket and the punch. Don't wait. Take That's it right, right now. That's right now. <laughs> foul on Zubek. His first. So here is Epe Udo at the line. The transfer from Michigan, set out last year, was the Big Ten leader in block shots in 2008. And this season, in his first year of competition in the Bears uniform, just obliterated every Baylor block shot record. In fact, took the Big 12 block shot record with him for a single season, topping Kelvin Cato's marks from his days back at Iowa State. Feeding down low, Lance Thomas, and he's blocked by Udo. Right on cue, and it's out of bounds, going back to the Bears. And Mike Krzyzewski gonna make a substitution here, but look at Udo. At the apex of the shot release, able to keep his body away from the shooter and get those long arms up on the ball, but a matchup problem was starting to emerge, and Zubek and Tom is going to sit down. There's a little more mobility on the front line now that the Plumleys are out there, and that should be a better defensive matchup in trying to deal with F.A. Udo. The Plumleys out of Warsaw, Indiana, about 130 miles from Indianapolis, would like to go back home. The freshman is number five. That's Mason, 21. Here's Ma Mason, the freshman, 6'10". His brother, Miles, number 21. Singler. Lost it on the way up. The Bears reached in and forced the Duke turnover. Udo. There's Shire. In the paint. One hand, no. Breaking out with it is done. Got Jones on the left side. He's going to hit the pull-up jumper. No. Tapped up AC. And a foul called. One of the wait and make sure that it was, in fact, on Singler. And that is number two on Kyle Singler. So he sits. Andre Dawkins has come into the lineup, a freshman who can shoot the three. Has been asked to do that so far in the NCAA tournament. AC at the line for a couple for the Bears. Well, that's a huge loss for Duke. Singler has been fantastic for the last month or so, and he's been excellent in the tournament. He's got such range as a shooter, and he's a ball handler and another oh, defender and rebounder. So Dawkins now going to have to step up under the bright lights. He's capable. The young man has a tremendous shooting stroke. Find Beautiful. Smith. That is Mason Plumley with the assist. You notice how he caught that ball in the middle, Jim, and then he was in a stance ready to make a play. So often you see guys catch it against the zone and they stand up and look tentative. Plumley was determined to make a nice cut and nice play on that cut. Done. That down low. Got position with Shire behind him. And that's five points now for Lace Darius Dunn. Well, talking to some of the Baylor folks here that follow this team closely all year, when Lace Darius Dunn makes that first shot, he typically gets going at the offensive end early. And that's what he did here this afternoon with a three on his first attempt. And he missed his next three and then went inside and got that last basket. 
Runner by Smith. Well, you've got to like the way Duke is attacking the zone, Jim. Twice they've gotten the ball into the middle and gotten layups. Actually got a layup and a three-point shot, and that time off the dribble, Smith able to find the seam and utilize that runner. Smith with seven, leading Duke. You go. Over the freshman. And AC pushed off. Let's check out Dunn on Shire. Look at this Baylor defense switching it up a little bit. Now they fall back into the zone. Yep. And you see there's always a guy for Duke in the middle of the floor. Lumley lost it. Taking away Udo. Down low, AC misses the slam. Well, that's good attack and early offense, and AC usually is quite reliable with those throwdowns. Like 70% of his field goals made are dunked. Brother to brother, Miles Plumley. And that's a foul on Udo. His first, third against Baylor. After the push ahead, AC kind of lost it as he was going up. His hands aren't that large, so he wasn't able to squeeze it as he tried to palm it, and it kind of squirted out as he was looking to throw it down there. The older of the brothers. Miles Plumley hits the first. His mother played basketball at Purdue as you see Lance Thomas come in for Mason Plumley. Miles with one more coming and their dad played basketball at Tennessee Tech. And they got them both. And Zubak's going to return for him. Zubak with his 14th straight start. Been a difference maker down the stretch for Duke. He sure has been. Talk about what he's done in this tournament, Jim. 31 rebounds in 64 minutes played. In the college game, if you get a rebound every three and a half to four minutes, that's excellent. He's getting one every two minutes of action. Had 14 rebounds in the win over Purdue. That's Jones firing up to three, and it's long. Zubek hits the floor in his battle with AC. And now it's Jones. Dangerous pass. They got three on the shot clock. Never touched the rim. Dunn knows it and hits it. He can manufacture shots. Fighting the shot clock. That's exactly where Baylor wants the ball and lays Darius Dunn's hand. Dunn who set the Baylor single season scoring record with his performance on Friday night. Well, Zubak's got the turn and face from that foul line area. There's Dawkins, the freshman from Chesapeake, Virginia. Woody <laughs> Carter. Tough shot, went across the body. Follow up and one, and it's going to be the second on Zubak. Quincy AC. Duke now with two starters in foul trouble. Zubak and Singler. AC will have a chance to tie the game at 14. Out of the break. A little tournament summary for you. Butler, did you have them in your brackets, folks? They're going to their first Final Four. They don't only have to travel, but seven miles. <laughs> West Virginia was in back in 59. And after 51 years, they're back in. Michigan State, Tom Izzo does it again. Unbelievable. And Duke trying to be the only number one seed to make it this year. The last time there were no ones was 06. So Zubak on the bench with two fouls. Singler still sits with two. Exactly. Duke has knocked down a couple of threes, one by Dawkins and one by Nolan Smith. They've done a nice job, Jim, attacking this zone and getting good shots. Another good look. Thomas underneath. And no foul. 
Coming out with it is A.J. Walton for Baylor, seeing his first play tonight. A freshman from Little Rock, Arkansas. They've also inserted Fred Ellis, number three, into the game. Well, A.J. Walton had a terrific game the other night, Jim. Seven points, perfect shooting, three of three, one of one from the three-point line, a couple of assists and rebounds, and two steals in 23 minutes. That's an offensive foul on Lomers, and that will be his second yes. foul as well. So now Lomers. It's a little issue here for Coach Scott Drew. Instantly springing up off the bench. Epe Udo. And that will be, in fact, for Lomers. You know, Baylor a year ago was a 5 and 11 team in the regular season in conference play, and they switched to this zone for the Big 12 tournament last year. Mm -hmm. And that has made all the difference for this program. They've been 35 and 9 ever since. They went to the NIT final last year, lost in the final there to Penn State, finished second in the conference this year. Their singler got back on the floor, comes up short with the shot, and it's off Baylor's hands. Well, you know, sometimes you just stumble into things, Jim, as a coach. Your personnel is struggling playing one way or one type of defense. You try something different and it fits. And you think about the length of Epe Udo. He's a shot blocker, so if you can funnel guys into his area, he can deny them as Mason Plumley returns to the lineup, replacing Lance Thomas. That's Smith on the wing. That's a three. Boy, he's been really good. And Baylor has been late getting to the shooters for Duke. They've not been up challenging as well as they did the other night. And Duke is taking advantage of that. Nolan Smith with 10 of Duke's 17. Tweedy Carter over Smith. Tough shot. First two of the game for Tweedy Carter. Shire is going to fire it from the corner, and he's got a three. Right now, Duke is picking his zone apart, Jim, because they're getting past penetration to the middle of the floor. And when that happens, it forces the defense to rotate, and Duke doing a nice job spotting up and knocking down shots. They've made four or five from behind the arc. Shire had missed 12 of his last 13 from behind the arc before he ripped the nets that time. Lace Darius done back on the floor for Fred Ellis. Not nearly the kind of ball pressure we saw from Baylor in the zone Friday, but they obviously are facing a different team, and Duke very well prepared to attack. Mike Krzyzewski talked about needing to get shots below the foul line, and if you don't get the shot there, penetration there will give you open three-pointers. That's singular crashing the boards. Smith, who has the hot hand for the Devils, has his pass picked by Walton. Feeds it to Carter, and the Bears are back within a bucket. I think that may be the first time that Baylor has gotten a hand on a pass on the perimeter, and it leads to two points. Miles Plumley driving in, shielding with the body and freeing up the shot. But the patience and poise that he showed when he caught the ball at the foul line, Jim, turn and face, see what you've got. If nobody comes to you, take it into the lane. And he did a really good job that time surveying his situation and getting a good look. Off the deflection, there it is right there, Walton with the pilfer, and then the very simple bounce pass to Tweedy Carter. Good spacing on that transition opportunity, and it makes it easy when you're running two on one. Going to take the point guard out. Anthony Jones comes back in. That foul on Mason Plumley, his first, the fifth team foul on Duke as we approach eight minutes to play in the first half. No double here. Udo should go to work. Pretty good defense that time by Mason Plumley. That's deflected and really stolen thanks to Nolan Smith. 
And that's the fifth Bear turnover. The Shire loads it up and hits it again. Picking up right where he left off in the second half Friday night in the semifinals. Duke now five out of six from behind the arc. Leading by seven, even though Kyle Singler has not scored in this to this point. Well, there you see why they are leading. 15 points from behind the arc. Only three of those for Baylor. And Shire almost coming out with it. Quick hands back to Dunn, and he's fouled in the act of shooting by Shire. It's an 11-4 stretch, and the Blue Devils are up seven. Along with Clark Kellogg, Jim Nance here in Houston. This game was tied at 14, but Duke on an 11-4 tear right now, Clark. They're doing a nice job crisply attacking the zone. Diagonal pass, Smith to Thomas. A dunk, get it to the middle. Mason Plumley finds Nolan Smith on the back cut. And they've also been able to get some good looks at the three-point shot. They've made five of six, but the real key, Jim, has been the penetration of the ball by way of the pass to that foul line area against the zone. Baylor has been too soft in the zone. They're not pressuring the ball and they're allowing it to the middle. You have to do one or the other. Pressure it powered or take away the pass into the middle of the lane. Coming off the Shire foul. The sixth against Duke first on Shire. Dunn hits them both. Coming out of the huddle. Now the 25-20. Plumley back out to Shire, sets up Smith. That's long. And Singler had to be careful going up for that one. Good Six. job by Anthony Jones to get that inside position, Jim. They got him. The place Darius Dunn. What a pass by Tweedy Carter. Right over the top of Duke. That's all eye contact and familiarity with one another, Jim. Those guys hook up for that play at least once, sometimes two or three times a game. And it's never called, or rarely called. Club late, long with the jumper, and Baylor comes down with it. It's done again. He has half the Baylor points, 11 of the 22. Match up here for Singler. Although Carter takes him off the hook by giving it up. He'll get it back now and try to go to work. Five on the shot clock. Udo will take the jump hook. Anthony Jones in there. Gets the offensive glass and he's on the end line out of bounds. Duke really fortunate there. Miles Plumley didn't put a body on Anthony Jones and he was able to slip inside of him. And yeah, there was the right heel, actually the left heel, right on the, the end line. Smith hits the shot again. 12 now for Nolan Smith. Well, he had a big second half the other night. He and Shire both really warmed up and he's picked up right where he left off, Jim. Back on the floor for Duke with the two fouls. He's returned. Tweedy Carter. He's got a three. Seven points for Carter. Baylor back within two. Had been down seven. Singler. He's blocked by Jones, but gets it back. Smith. Splits defenders. Rolls off the rim into the hands of Jones. This for the lead. Done, no. A bit of a force there, but 
with a guy who has his offensive firepower, you tend to live with a couple of those shots if you're Scott Drew. Coming from Lays Darius Dunn. Singler trying to get on the board. Still scoreless. A little bit out of rhythm, and you can attribute that to the early fouls that Singler picked up, Jim. Had to sit, and he's out there in spot duty. Wants to be cautious, so that's affecting his shooting rhythm. Singler 0 for 5 from the field. Carter just turned it over for the second time. A 27-25 Duke late first half. How about the road to the final four for the Butler Bulldogs? Seven miles or a few lights now <laughs> on the way to Lucas Oil Stadium. But on a green light day, I bet you it would be about 12 minutes from that campus to Lucas Oil Stadium. What a performance by the Bulldogs to win out west. Boy, I tell you, they were the best team out there, Jim. Their defense was stellar. And there's a toughness and athleticism to that team that people have overlooked. And Hayward and Mack were outstanding, but it was a great team effort for the Bulldogs to get to Indianapolis. Well, inside, Duke goes, and it's Thomas trying to chase it down. It'll stay with Duke. But for Butler to come in and beat in the regionals, Syracuse and then Kansas State, pretty stellar stuff. And very impressive, and it was done with the defense. Physical, active, aggressive defense, working as a unit as we take a look at Mason Plumley replacing Lance Thomas, Mike Krzyzewski will continue to shuttle in his big guys. That's one of the differences in this Duke team and in years, in recent years, much more depth and size and production up front. Oh, what a nifty move by Mason Plumley. He was going up with it and had to alter the shot a little bit. And the freshman puts up two for the Devils. Open lane, Udo, and Zubek comes crashing in. Is it Zubek or Plumley? It it's Zubek, Zubek mm -hmm. number three on the center for Duke. Coming up AT&T at the half, Greg Gumble, Greg Anthony, Seth Davis speaking live with West Virginia head coach Bob Huggins and Deshaun Butler about getting to the Final Four. You'll hear from Michigan State about also making it to Indianapolis and another AT&T Naismith watch update coming up. AT&T at the half. Three for Zubek and Udo at the line for two. It'll be Miles Plumley for him. You start looking at the three teams that are in the Final Four, though, Clark, and they all are within really close proximity, if you will, to Indianapolis. You, know, you got the Big Ten country, Michigan State, sure. not, not, not unaccustomed to traveling there for the Big Ten tournament, for example, mm -hmm. every year. West Virginia. That's a comfortable drive. A very comfortable drive, and Indianapolis, a tremendous host city for the Final Four, so you're right. Depending on what happens here, this team will be actually this whoever comes out of this one will have to travel the most miles to get to Indianapolis. There you see Butler 24 W's in a row. Hey, there were a lot of people saying they wouldn't get out of the first round this year, Clark. You know, remember <laughs> well, they were wrong. They were wrong. Everybody were said, wrong. hey, UTEP's going to beat them. I, I wasn't one buying into that. But well, it was an interesting matchup. Yep. And I heard a lot of people talking. I thought it would be a difficult matchup for Butler. But they've proven themselves worthy of the final four. And not just to get there, Jim, they've got a chance to win it. That was the first foul on Dunn. Ball stripped by Dunn, and he's taken off. Lace Darius doing it again. Well, that time, Mason Plumley was just a little too deliberate. In his effort to make a play, you catch it in that post area, turn and face, and then make a quick decision and get that ball moving. See, he held it too long, never saw it done, and he's off and running. Punch it home, young fella. It's a one point game. Lace Darius done with 13 of Baylor's 28. Well, his game is what I call wrinkle free, partner. Ah. Smooth and crisp. No maintenance, low maintenance. He can put it in the basket a variety of ways. He was the sixth man of the year in the Big 12 last year, and then this season made second team all conference. 
way he's played the tournament, it's hard to imagine they're five better. And there's a steal by Anthony Jones. AC thought about it, comes in. Oh, no, goaltending, and Baylor leads. Ball on its way down. That wasn't a hard one to call. It's a 12-4 stretch for the Big 12's Baylor Bears. Well, now the zone defense starting to cause some disruption, Jim. Deflections, steals. Now you get Duke a little bit on its heels. Got to go to work there when you catch it inside like that. Turnaround shot, front of the rim, Singler. 0 for 6 now. Udo bounces it in, AC puts it away. He made sure that time he missed one earlier, trying to throw it down with one. A lot of strength with that attempt. Minute to go in the half. Duke at one time led it 25 to 18. 14 to 4 since that time, and Baylor's looking for more. Behind the back to Carter. Three point shot, yes! And Duke has his largest deficit of the tournament. For Shire in the lane. Kick out Dawkins. He's hit two for two off the bench. Beautiful stroke and an aggressive move by Shire to get into the lane. Those turnovers that were created by Baylor, Duke was a little passive. That time Shire got into the lane with force and created a shot for Dawkins. Shot clock off. It's Udo with seven. Driving in, looking for the kick out. It's Carter. Well, the Bears have a 12 3 stretch to close out the half. And the three seeds lead to one seed by three. You got to squeeze that orange if you're the Blue Devils. You need Brian Zubek to be able to stay on the floor, even though he has the three fouls. Baylor took advantage of his absence by getting to the offensive glass. You need his size on the court. And Obviously, Singler picking up the two early fouls, never found a rhythm offensively, 0 of 6. Duke will need his point production in this second half. It's Shire. He's got an open shot, and he hits another shot from three. Boy, that is textbook execution against the zone, Jim. Spacing the floor, attacking the middle, which is the soft spot against it. And moving that ball crisply and with a purpose, and then stepping into your shot with aggression. That's Romers. He set much of that first half with the two fouls, played only six minutes. Meanwhile, at this end, Shire, who's hit all three of his shots from behind the arc. Well, he's a 38% career three point shooter. Zubak's pass is picked off by Tweedy Carter. He saw it coming. He was going to try to tee it up to Lance Thomas. Carter off of his three. Put back Udo. Well, that's just a missed block out there. There were white jerseys around, but none of them pursued the ball or put a body on Udo. Thomas left open. Way off with the short shot. Zubak with the putback of his own. His first two points of the night. Boy, if you're going to be able to penetrate that zone with that pass like that, you need to convert that shot. Thomas is capable there. He just was a little errant with that one, but that's a shot you've got to be ready to take and make. Udo feeds corner. Anthony Jones hitting the three in his hometown. Duke trailing in the second half for the first time in an NCAA tournament game this year. Singler, clobbered, and he'll head to the line to try to put points on the board for the first time today. Udo runs in unmolested. There you see nobody was down on that wing. He had a full 
lane to walk to and throw that one down. Meanwhile, it was the third foul on Lomers. Kyle Singler has his first point of the game. Zubak is replaced by Miles Plumley. Well, Lomers with the third foul, Jim. It looks like Scott Drew is going to leave him out there for a bit. Quincy AC was fantastic in that first half. He had eight points and four offensive rebounds. Long rebound tapped out to Shire. Puts up another three. He's fouled in the act of shooting three, and it's the fourth on Lomers. They kept him on the floor when you thought they might have replaced him during the free throws, and he shoved Shire during the shot. Well, that's up. just a case of poor judgment by Lomers. I mean, he runs out there and then right into him. Yeah, that's that's almost inexcusable there. You just don't need your center running out there to challenge a three-point shot like that, especially when you've got three fouls already. Two fouls in five seconds. And Jim, when you turn your body into the shooter like that, you always run the risk of committing a foul. I mean, if you're face to face in a challenge, you've got a much better chance of not committing a foul. But when you go sideways or put your back to the shooter while he's airborne, you're asking for a foul. Shire hits all three. And now it's a one point Baylor lead. Duke applying some full court pressure. You want to make sure somebody else handles it instead of Tweedy Carter, and they did that. But Udo showing you some pretty good ball handling skills for a center. Dunn trying to get away from Singler. Drives in on Plumley, and the basket counts. 15 for Dunn with a chance to add another one. Well, you heard Coach Krzyzewski talk about defending the guards for Baylor, and he was speaking of Lace Darius Dunn and Tweedy Carter. Beautiful use of the left hand, got his body into the shot blocker. Nice low angle look at it, turned the corner with help from a teammate on the screen, and then finished it. It was the first foul on Miles Plumley, who pulls down the missed charity shot. Smith. Heavy traffic. And now the Baylor fouls starting to pile up. The Masters Live will stream exclusive video of Amen Corner Live, 15 and 16 Live, featured Group Live, plus Masters Extra, showing bonus coverage of the entire field at cbsports.com slash Masters Live and Masters.com. Udo with his second foul. And Seth Lee. Davis talked about, excuse me, Jim, Seth Davis talked about it in the studio. The need for Duke to become aggressive and get to the free throw line. And so far here in the first three minutes, they've been able to knock down some free throws and stay tight. That's been the story, really, of these first three minutes. Mm -hmm. Duke living at the line, plus a Shire three, but it's still a one-point lead for the Bears. Done. <laughs> Miles Plumley jumping up there with Quincy AC and bringing it down. Plus six and three throws this half for Duke. Smith. Kept oh. alive. Singler spins. Missed on the inside and it comes out to Dunn. Close range misses by the Blue Devils. Unlucky that time for Singler. Carter. Short with the lay-in. Smith takes right past AC, and Dunn's gonna pick up the foul. Which is his second. NCAA March Madness on demand, a streaming the men's Division I NCAA Championship online for free. Watch any game, anytime at NCAA.com. You know, on the season, Jim, Duke has averaged four more free throw makes than their opponents. And 
starting to have that kind of advantage here now particularly in the second half they were minus four in points at the free throw line minus six in attempts at halftime and they've totally flipped that script right now this one for the lead it belongs to Duke now by one all four fouls in the second half committed by Baylor have been shooting fouls and Duke's hit the free throws Baseline jumper rattles out, but it's Udo keeping possession for Baylor. A.J. Walton on the floor, manning the point guard position with Tweedy Carter, getting a break. Udo. Both Plumleys hit the floor. Udo will be shooting free throws. Out of the break. That was Miles Plumley. It's an 8-2 stretch for Duke. Back in front by one. And a good collection, and we're just waiting for the fourth and final team that will be heading to Indianapolis to be decided. And we've got a tight one here, partner. Duke has turned things around by attacking the basket, drawing fouls, and knocking down free throws. Ba Baylor now is going to try to ramp up that defensive pressure. That was the difference the last five minutes of the first half, Jim, the defensive activity in that zone by Baylor. Udo gives the advantage back for the moment to Baylor. Off of the second foul on Miles Plumley. Make the press, open shot Smith, and it's Duke by one. Jay Walt gives it up to Dunn. And Singer on him. That matchup they started the game with. Dunn wants it. Over Singer. Tough shot. And Shires down low to pick it off the rim. That's exactly the kind of defensive pressure that Coach Krzyzewski's looking for from Kyle Singler against Dunn. First. Stay with him and challenge his shot. Going back to Baylor. Shire's first miss from three today. Michigan State and Butler pair of fives. They'll meet in one national semifinal. And out of the Big East, West Virginia will take on Big 12 or ACC next Saturday in the other semifinal. Lance Thomas returns to the lineup. Baylor now effectively with two point guards out there, Jim. A.J. Walton and Tweedy Carter as Lace Darius Dunn gets a rest, which means Tweedy will probably look to be a little more offensive-minded as opposed to setting up other people. Udo rolls off the rim. Maybe at some point, Singler's going to find the stroke. Underneath, this is a short one. Zubac, though, follows up. Singler still without a shot from the floor. Well, again, the penetration, though, Jim, creates offensive rebounding lanes. You get that ball behind the zone and get a good shot attempt. That zone defense is scrambling their holes in the paint area, and you can get offensive rebounding lanes. This is going to be against Lance Thomas away from the ball. His first and the third team foul of the half on Duke. Scott Drew calling out some signals and it is in fact intercepted. I think the game the more this game stays in the half court I think it advantage goes to Duke. They've shown they can really attack the zone effectively in the half court. Another good open look for Smith. He doesn't get it to go and that's a foul I think on Zubek. It is number four on Zubek. So now both centers strapped with four. Doesn't take long for Miles Plumley to jump off the bench. <laughs> Baylor has gone now 
four minutes without a field goal. And it's been a half court game. You recall back to the first half when they got it going and got on that run. They were forcing turnovers and getting out in transition. Carter off the screen by Udo. Boy, that was halfway down and spins out. Out of a called play, too. Little misdirection. Getting Carter open at the top of the lane, top of the three point line. Now, where's the pressure from Baylor defensively? Gotta try to be disruptive in this zone. Five on the shot clock. Singler skips it over. Shire from the corner. Walton is looking to take off, but Singler stopped his progress and knocked out by Shire stays with Baylor. And the fact that he stopped his progress kept that from being an easy pass to Lace Darius Dunn. Baylor's gone cold from the field, missed its last six shots. Done. Double pump. Tipped around to Udo. Oh, and he is walloped by Thomas. Tonight on 60 Minutes, the NBA will have two new owners next season. One is Michael Jordan, and the other, a billionaire Russian playboy. Meet the richer one tonight on 60 Minutes. Now, there is a uh, Duke tie, if you will, to the uh, arc of Epe Udo's college career. He shredded his shoulder basically before his senior year of high school, going to high school in Oklahoma. Edmond, Oklahoma was not really recruited by the Big 12 schools. But the one guy that was interested in him all along was Tommy Amaker, the former Duke point guard, who at the time was the Michigan head coach, and he stayed with him. He never wavered, even though he had an injury plague senior year of high school. He went up to Michigan to play. He got to play one year for Amaker and then one year for Coach Beeline. And that is what then. Just the system didn't quite fit for him up there with the Wolverines, and he made his way back to the Southwest. Well, you take a look at the zone from the high angle here, but where's the ball pressure in the active hands? That's what Baylor needs to get done. That's a shot attempt from Plumlee. So I think he's got to take that mid-range jumper, Jim, as opposed to forcing himself into the lane and being challenged. I mean, he's got a wide open eight-footer when he turns after the catch you don't always have to get the best parking spot at the mall go ahead and take the first available <laughs> parking spot and walk the rest of the way that's some good advice yes it is take the shot that's available shire ah. tipped up ah. plumley no Nice job transitioning back. Good job by Plumley to derail the dribbler. That's right. He did a nice job corralling Tweedy Carter and hemming him up so there wasn't an opportunity for early transition. Well, it's Duke by two, but Baylor trying to tell the nation about basketball from Waco, Texas. Mickey Shashevsky. Very concerned. She is for all games. What wife isn't out there? There's Homer Drew watching his son on that Baylor bench. Mickey here with her three daughters, Debbie, Lindy, Jamie, and the seven grandchildren. Homer here with his son Bryce. There's Dunn with the three. Tipped over the backboard, and it's going to Duke. Well, we've had 13 consecutive misses now between both teams, Jim. Things starting to tighten up. It's been primarily a half court game. Shots not dropping. And the free throw advantage in this second half, eight of nine for Duke, the difference in the game right now. Smith. Both Plumley's had a hand on it for a moment. And it's going to stay with the Blue Devils. It never touched the rim. The Smith uh, may have been a pass anyway, but 14 seconds on the shot clock. 
We're giving him the benefit of the doubt there. That was a shot, I think, by yeah. Nolan Smith. Anthony Jones back in for A.J. Walton. It's it in. Locked. You go. Locked the shot of Miles Plumley, and there's AC at the other end, whipping the pass over. And that'll send Jones to the line. Well, I thought Shire missed Nolan Smith open, and then Plumley catches it and goes right into the shot blocker. I think that was Udo who got it, was it not? It was. And coming back in shortly here, Ryan Zubek. That was the second foul. They gave that one to Mason Plumley. Six foot ten sophomore Anthony Jones from Yates High School, right here in Houston. We'll have one more. Both back of the rim. We've not had a field goal either way here for over three minutes. Off the screen, Smith. The floater, yes. Beautiful. He's really mastered that little shot. And as a guard, you have to have that in your book bag because you're not always going to be able to get to the rim. So you've got to be able to pull up under control on balance with that little teardrop. He has 20 on the game. Leading the doubles. Carter oh. driving in. Gets two right back. Beautiful move by Tweedy Carter. The senior from Reserve, Louisiana, trying to extend his Baylor career. That broke a six minute, 53 second stretch where Baylor did not make a shot from the floor. Smith again, this time with the left hand. Zubak rejected by Udo, who sends it to the corner and Carter. Boy, Dunn was ready to launch it. He sure so, was. He so, was thinking about it, Jim. Singler closed in on him. That's what you want to do. You want to get to a shooter's body or get to his hands. You want to rubber band his hands. Udo oh. Zubak slipped, lost his footing, and the game is tied at 51. And a timeout, Duke. Boy, they just had a mess up defensively there, Jim, and you know, saying, look what I found, an open lane. Forget about it. Al Singler, the All-ACC player for the Devils, ACC Tournament MVP. Never had a game where he didn't make a field goal. You feel like there's some on the way. Maybe it's now. Not this time. Back to the rim. And the long board to Dunn. And Zubak twice has to be careful not to commit the foul and run into him. And the ball squirts out back into the hands of the Devils. Game tied with nine minutes to play. With one spot on the line in Indianapolis. The take on West Virginia in the national semifinals. Here is Singler, fakes the shot, doubled up, able to squeeze it back out to Shire with 10 on the shot clock. Dyer, lift it up inside and a foul. Thomas this time to the line for two. Mike Krzyzewski talked about his team needing to be patient, fighting the shot clock, they get penetration from Shire, and then a nice dump off pass for Lance Thomas. There's a fine line between attacking and being patient against the zone. That foul on Jones and the co-captain for the Devils. It's the first. Co-captain with John Shire. Seniors. And Lomers returns to the floor with four. Replacing number four, Quincy AC. An opportunity for Lomers to match up with Zubek. 
You've got Udo out there. He'll most likely be matched up with Lance Thomas. Duke has hit its last nine free throws. An excellent free throw shooting team on the year are the Blue Devils, Jim. 76%. And that's in large part because Singler, Smith, and Shire take the bulk of them. And all of them are really good free throw shooters. It's Udo. One low. The Lovers. Udo able to find them there in the paint. 53 is on the board. Singler will be heading to the line. And Josh Lomers is Dairy Queen. That is number five. Lomers just a short stint in this game. Singler doing a nice job going right into him, Jim. Didn't avoid him. Went right into his chest to draw that foul. And I just read Lomer's lips. I think he told Lace Darius Dunn, take over. We'll see if that can happen. It's always a bad feeling, Jim, with so much time on the clock and you have to go sit and watch and you're not hurt. And you can't help. Right. And you're a senior. Exactly. And you don't know if you're walking up that floor in a Baylor uniform for the last time. All of the above. Senior from Bernie, Texas. He had a big game on Friday night. Sure did. He was a real mountain inside. That was the 16 foul, so one away from the bonus. Said it was not in the act of shooting. Quincy AC is on the floor, taking Lomer's position. Zubat dishes Singler. And he touched it going out of bounds. Tenth Duke turnover. 7.45 to go in the game and a break in the action. And the game is tied with Indy on the line. Jim Nance and Clark Kellogg back here in Houston. Just one point so far for Singler in this one. 0 for 9 from the field. Baylor ball inbounded with 7.45 to play. play this one the rest of the way in the half court I think it would benefit Baylor if somehow they could get out in transition I mean, you've got a guard as good as Carter you're not afraid of playing in the half court oh, oh, misled. Oh, my oh. goodness that was AJ Walton I think who blew that opportunity on the putback Duke shooting 24 percent on the half made only one field goal the last seven minutes Zubek has to turn and face from there. Back to Zubek, tipped up. No, Thomas whips it to the corner. And Shire, eight on the shot clock. In the paint. Off the front of the rim, Zubek able to squeeze up a shot and draw the foul on AC. That's the 17 foul on Baylor, second on Quincy AC, the sophomore from Mesquite, Texas. Well, you can start to feel the tension, Jim. Yes, Both teams can. really trying to milk every possession. But at this juncture, in this kind of a game where you have to be able to squeeze off some easy baskets, there are a number of ways to do that. Transition, second shot opportunities, but you have to stay aggressive. Boy, there you talk about tension there. A deep breath for Mickey Shashevsky. And a good looking foul shot that time from Zubek. Smith will challenge Carter as he brings it up court. Looking 
work for it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Nice hedge and help by Zubek. Gundo able to weave through it all and give Baylor the lead by one. Well, I think if you're going to deal with him in the pick and roll, you might have to trap him and make him get rid of it. Thomas on the blocks. Udo, speaking of blocks, well, his you, fourth. And Udo was trying to tip that ball to Dunn when he had a chance to corral it himself. Here's Lace Darius Dunn. You see, they come out and hedge, and then he's going to keep that dribble alive and then reuse the screen, and now he's got Zubek backpedaling and Singler on his hip. That allowed him to maneuver that ball between them. That's just a tough cover for Zubek. He did a pretty good job initially, but keeping that dribble alive allowed Dunn to create the space he needed. One and one. Good now. Missing free throws, one by Thomas, one by Zubek. That was the third foul call against Dunn, who has it in his hands at midcourt. And his team leads by one. Nolan Smith trying to deny Carter. Dunn again, trying to weave through traffic. Gets the shot off. Called on Thomas. Epe Udo. He's done it at both ends. He sure has. That was a terrific move. Oh. Denial there. And then slipping three oh. on a defensive breakdown by Duke. But this kid plays with such poise. You look at his numbers. He's second on this team in assists, Jim. I mean, he finds people. He's got a tremendous feel for the game, excellent IQ. And a good motor. He's quiet in demeanor. But he's got a very good competitive motor. Third on Thomas, and he'll go out for a break. 544 on the clock. And one more for Dunn. The lead is three. Well, you know where the ball is going when Baylor has it. It's Lace Darius Dunn and Tweedy Carter, and maybe a little bit of Udo. You saw Scott Drew, a rarity. He never played college basketball. He can coach it. And he's five and a half away from doing something. My, many might have thought was unthinkable long ago getting Baylor to the final four when he took the job. Shire just could tie it and he does. Boy you love his willingness to step into shots. He doesn't shy away from them. 15 for Shire. 57 all. Nance Clark Kellogg back here in Houston. Look at the field goal percentages for the game. Baylor near 50% and holding Duke down to 33%. Although John Shire. This is Jim, this was off an offensive rebound. And that's one of the best times with that defense scrambling and not knowing where to match up to knock down that three. He's made four on the game from out there. This entire second half has been played within a nine point range. Baylor had a lead by as many as five. Duke at one time in the second half led by a four. And inside, goodbye, Quincy AC. Set that one up in the timeout. Sure did. Look at the points in the paint. They've doubled up Duke. Three point shooting and free throws have kept the Blue Devils tight. You can't get it up over him if you've got your back to him. Udo with his fifth block. Udo at the other end. AC oh. driving in. Charge. No basket. Wow. Let's take a look at this one. AC on the drive. Could have been Zubek's fifth. Yeah, it was very close. That is the third on AC. Boy, what, what about the play by Zubek to get there and take it right in the chest? Shire, this is for the lead. Battles out. That's Thomas, though. Boy, Duke getting an awful lot of second opportunities, Jim. Nolan Smith puts Duke back in front by one. 23 for Smith. The last six points for Duke on second shot opportunities. A pair of threes after they got a second rebound. Lance Thomas kept it alive on this occasion. 
And Smith put the Devils in front by one. Well, Josh Lomer's fouled out in only nine minutes of action. Zubek has four. But Nolan Smith just hit a shot to put Duke ahead by one. Okay, he's had a splendid tournament the last couple of games, utilizing everything in his package, stepping into that three-point shot. That's the product of a lot of off-season work, Jim. He was not nearly as reliable a three-point shooter last year as he is this year, and it's all work. Now let's see what they call out of this timeout. He's gotten good execution a couple of times. You don't. He can handle it and go to work one-on-one. -on -one. Working on Thomas. <laughs> and puts Baylor. In the lead at 61-60. How about Efe going to the left hand there? Going against an all-ACC defender in Lance Thomas. And they cleared it out for him there, Jim, and a touch foul on Carter. That's going to be the 10th on Baylor. Double bonus. Shire will shoot two out of the break. With the 10th foul committed, Nolan Smith actually to the line for two. And the first one. My Smith ties the game at 61. He has been the star player today for the Blue Devils. 24 points now for Nolan Smith. He's been aggressive from the start, Jim, as he back irons that one. And another offensive rebound for Duke. And the third three-point field goal on a second shot attempt in the last two minutes. Again, it was Lance Thomas for the second time in the last minute of action, able to tap it out to Nolan Smith on both occasions. It led to a Smith three. And Shire got one as well. Oh. Tipped up now. Back out to Jones. Anthony Jones, Quincy AC. And with three minutes to go. Every possession so crucial. Efe Udo short with the bank shot. Nolan Smith slipped on a wet spot. It's going to be addressed while they're at the other end of the floor. Well, Jim, so often when you play zone, you don't have individual blockout responsibilities, and that means everybody has to chase down rebound. I mean, that was off a missed free throw. Shire gets to the lead of six. 18 for the game for Shire. Again, Don gambling on Zubek, and that leaves Shire free. And boy, he is not hesitant at all. And what a time to continue to break out of what has been a month-long shooting slump for Shire. There's a delay of game warning on. On Singler. I think you've got to go pick and roll here. Lace Darius Dunn has not handled the ball at all. Singler doing a nice job on him. But they're trying to isolate Udo. That's what, that's what they're trying to do. And they got the fifth foul on Zubek. Zubek shouting out and pouring to his teammates to get him across the finish line without him. 2.18 to play. So the 7-1 senior from Haddonfield, New Jersey, who has sparkled here on the back half of his senior year. He is finished for the game. Duke has had, you've been talking about it so much, a total 17 Second chance points just this half alone. A bunch of those have been threes. I mean, we've seen nine of them, nine of those points in the last three possessions, Jim, off second shot chances. F.A. Udo will shoot a pair. I wonder if Baylor would apply some full court pressure if they get both of these free throws down. Udo, the newcomer of the year in the Big 12 Conference. Again, the Bears finished tied for second in the league with Kansas State. Kansas won the regular season by a wide margin. Udo follows his miss. Dunn spots up for a three. It's wide of the mark. Swiped away by Smith. Yeah, he rushed that one. Rushed that one just a bit. Now you've got to try to defend without fouling, and Duke going to space the floor here. And 
Baylor content to sit back. You gotta be able to contain dribble penetration without foul. Shire whips it to the corner. Could this be the time? Singler, no. Oh, yes, Lance Thomas. And the foul. Scott Drew talked about it at the top of our telecast. We have to rebound. The last four possessions, they have not, and it has cost them mightily. The floor is spaced, the missed shot, no box out, and there's Lance Thomas. It has been such a huge story, what he has done just to keep the ball alive on the offensive end of this half, usually setting up someone else. This time, he makes a three-point play of his own. And just like that, Duke is in front by eight. There's the story of your ball game. Singler with the steal. 23 to 11 in second chance points, and a vast majority of those have come here in the last five or six minutes for Duke. Timeout. Shire called a timeout when he was doubled up. And watch out. AC and Smith exchange words. And the Duke players wanted to come in and lend a little support. We're rushed back to their bench area, as are the Baylor players. Coach K just wants to make sure that, hey, he's talking to the officials. You don't want to call any kind of fighting you know, situation here because there are some stiff penalties that come with that. And there's a timeout call by Shire, and then there's a bump. I think Quincy AC got his shoulder in the mix. A little extracurricular. But they could have used some of that bumping on the backboards the last four or five possessions. So Shire is granted the timeout. He was doubled up. Yeah, he called the timeout right here. As soon as he picks up the ball, he knows he's trapped. There's the timeout right there. You can see his mouth open, and then the official Scott Thorne is going to give him the timeout call. And then there was just a little extra activity as he was trying to get the. There it is right there. So, okay, there is done. Then Shire swings. And then AC came into the picture right there. And that's where you had a bump. So a good job of officiating just to get those guys separated. Let's see what the clock situation is here. Time out right at 119. That's what we've got. So. so the officials separate them. Nothing else is called after the timeout is granted. Baylor had the lead in this one with 544 to play. Led 57-54. What has been Duke 16-5 since that time. And it's been threes and threes for Duke. Three pointers and free throws that have made up that run. Although Lance Thomas did get a tip dunk off a missed shot. But other than that, charity tosses and triples. Shire being double teamed, wants the timeout, gets it, and then he's trying to get away from Lace Darius Dunn and flung the arm, but nothing that warranted any more than what was done. Well, the officials did go over and look at that sequence of replays during the timeout. They asked to review. Now, calling Coach Krzyzewski over, and they're asking for Scott Drew. They're signaling over to the Baylor bench. And I think we'll get an explanation as well, perhaps, once the conference is completed with the coaches. Michael Stewart, Scott Thornley, and Douglas Sermons officiating crew here. I think the discussion is about AC Quincy AC coming into the picture and bumping into John Shire.
know if you could hear that, but it's been explained to us. It's a dead ball contact technical foul right. against Quincy AC. He's going to come into your screen right there, number four at the bottom. He starts moving in, and there it is right there. He bumps into Nolan Smith, and that's what the officials saw in the replay. So it's a dead ball, as you explained, Jim. Contact technical, which means two free throws, and Duke has the ball at half court. Well, it's a just an enormous call. It's a huge impact with a minute 19 to go. Shire stands alone at the line for a pair. The history major in his senior year out of Northbrook, Illinois. Same high school as Chris Collins, who recruited him to Duke. Really, American history, his specialty. And he knows all about Duke history. He's a minute and 19 from making sure he's a part of it. That Final Four history, that is. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's been a huge factor in this one in the second half. 20 points on the game, 14 in the second half. Look at the free throw discrepancy, Jim. Plus 13, plus 17 in makes and attempts. Pass picked off by a Judy Carter. Done. Well, you got to go quick. Set up Walton with three. Tipped up Udo. Back to AC. Out high, Carter. Three. Plus, no. Tipped up, yes. Udo for 47 seconds. Timeout, Baylor. Baylor, eight down with 47 seconds to play here in Houston. A pair of fives and a two already bound for Indianapolis. Of course, Butler was going to Indianapolis anyway. Regardless, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> and will it be a one? Will Duke survive the final 47 seconds? Go back to the final four for the first time in six years. Well, you expect full court pressure here by Baylor. And they'll give themselves a chance to come up with the steal, and then they'll have to foul immediately. Smith has a career high. He's hoping they'll foul him. And he's going to be the one going to the line for two. I was talking to Nolan Smith last week in Jacksonville and asked him for his first Final Four memory. When does he really remember first watching it? And he said, I first remember all the hoopla about the Final Four by watching tapes of my father with his father, who was a star on that Louisville 1980 National Championship team, Derek Smith. Late Derek Smith. So his memories of the Final Four are really stirred by watching his father and watching his Cardinal team excel. Now he is getting close to getting a chance of experiencing that same thrill. His father's team won the championship in Indianapolis, by the way. That's right. Back in 1980, we played that Louisville team that year, Jim, when I was at Ohio State. As Udo, Udo gets a basket and a timeout quickly called. Another Baylor timeout. 74 66, Duke. Full court pressure, of course. Desperation times for the Baylor Bears, and it'll be Singler's turn to shoot two. The second chance points category. Such a big one. Big part of this late surge by the Devils. Thomas so often the one keeping it going. Zubek with a put back. Thomas here. And that's been a strength of this Duke team all year. There you see the point differential. How about the offensive rebounds by Duke? Wow. 23. Was that number? My goodness. They had a bunch for 23. 17 in this half. And a number of those led to three point shots, Jim, and opportunities at the line. And that's where they cracked this one open. It was tight until the second shot started piling up for Duke, followed by the three-point field goal makes. Singler gets both free throws. Back to 10 with just 25 seconds done to AC. And they'll send Dawkins, the freshman, to the line. What do you think? The second chance points, of course, uh, 
you've hit on that a few times, but the stage, the atmosphere, the pressure and intensity of that chance to have that breakthrough win, it's a, it's oh, a yeah, heavy, it's a weighty yeah. assignment down it the sure stretch, is. isn't it? It sure is. And How I much thought, of a factor do you think that might have been? I think it was a mild factor, Jim, because Baylor really did a nice job at the end of that first half and then came out and allowed the game to become too much of a half-court game. They weren't nearly as aggressive defensively, and Duke went after it, and I think the experience... Although this team has not been to this point, this group of players, but the confidence and leadership of Shire. I mean, he stepped into some big three-point shots here late in the ball game when it was in balance. And that created the space Duke needed to ride to this victory. Just 20 seconds to go, and the final four will be all set. You know, working hard for it as he always does. stays with the Bears and they're going to be a pretty stout bunch to contend with next year they'll lose Tweedy. Are... yeah they'll lose Tweedy Carter the leader of D this club done with a three and a timeout Baylor that's at the five but only nine seconds to play here in Texas well that's it for timeouts for the Baylor Bears Baylor led at halftime in this one. Had the advantage early in the half. Duke came back. Back to Baylor it swung. And then Duke down the stretch. You talked about Will in the opening. You win these games a lot of times. It gets down to Will. Yep. Offensive rebounding is all about that. Timeout called by Duke. Still, still struggling to get the ball inbounds. Boy, they had everybody come up. In those situations, you'd like to send somebody long to keep that congestion from happening right there in the half court. The Blue Devils fortunate there that they were able to draw a foul. But that's not a lot of room to have 10 guys gathered in that half court area when you're trying to inbound the ball. I think you send a guy or two long. And those defenders have to go with them. Two more at the line for Singler. Just hit a couple. Obviously not a typical game for Singler. Just a really large presence on this Duke team. We talked last week about how Larry Bird was always his hero growing up as a basketball player. May have a chance to come across Larry next week in Indianapolis. Well, very well could. I know the Pacers are in town for a couple of home games next weekend. Five seconds to play. Is done with a three. It's long, and it's Duke's turn to return to the final four. They're heading for Indianapolis. Eleventh time for Coach K. So the field is all set. You got Big Ten against Horizon League in Michigan State and Butler. Big East meets ACC, West Virginia, and Duke. Now the Blue Devils, a lot of talk two weeks ago on this night. Man, how did they get that third overall seed? Should they have been on the one line? I think they've proven it. They're the only one to survive. They're heading to Indianapolis. The final four is all set. We'll continue on CBS in a moment.